This is the second time this month that Noah has hit another child. I know. I'll talk to him. Mrs. Morrow, it, is there anything going on at home that I can help with? No, thanks. Am I in trouble, Mom? We can't let your dad know. Go to Auntie's house until after school and then come straight home. Are you in trouble? I wish she would stop hurting you, Mommy. Go now. This is my community. I love it here. Well, most of the time. I love my people. You stupid! Well, most of them. See the tornado coming? That's how I feel in my own house, waiting for my husband to come home. He's like a tornado. Around this time, I feel him twisting his way towards us. And I get knots in my stomach, just waiting for him to blow through. I have to batten down the hatches. I have to make sure we're safe. I didn't forget anything, did I? And I know I'm not the only one waiting for the storm to come. I know people can tell that he hits me because he leaves bruises on my face. But I've never told anyone about how he controls me with money. He doesn't let me have any of my own. So I feel like I can never get away. He intimidates me. He tells me that things happen differently than I know they did. He makes me feel like I'm going crazy. He threatens me and the kids and even the dog. He goes into jealous rages even though he barely lets me out of the house. I'm not even allowed to see my family. I feel so alone. It touches me in ways I don't like. He says I'll get in trouble if I tell anyone. I rejected him, and now he stalks me, and I'm afraid all the time. He follows me wherever I go. He shows up at my work, he texts me, calls me, and emails me. He always finds out my number, even after I change it. He has even threatened my life. I don't think it was always like this. James, please! I know how it started in my own family. This cycle. This tornado. My grandpa was taken from his parents and community when he was still just a boy and put into residential school. He witnessed abuse and he suffered from it. He never healed. And he looked for medicine in liquor bottles for the rest of his life. When he was drinking, he beat up my grandma. He had huge hands. Grandpa always used to tell my grandma he's sorry. It was the same for my mom with her husband. And now, it's the same for me. I'm sorry, baby. I'll never do it again. But I can't let my son see this anymore. I don't want him to turn out like that. So we're packing up. He's gone away to work, and I plan to be gone when he gets back. Hi, Claire. Can you come over? I need some help. Of course you guys can stay with me until you figure out what to do. Thanks. I'm really worried about money. And what about the kids' school? And the house? Oh, God. Am I doing the right thing? Of course you are. The best thing to do right now is call the police. The police? There are plenty of reasons to call them, Marnie. Anytime you're worried for you or your kids' safety is a good reason. Plus, James has a history of being abusive. But what's going to happen if I call them? Well, I called 911 when my ex was threatening and hitting me. The police came, and I gave a statement. Then he was arrested. Marnie, you have the right to ask the police to protect you. I'm scared. I know this is really hard but you need to start thinking about ways to keep you and the kids safe. I'm really worried about you. I've been thinking about a plan. I'm sure we can stay with Auntie for a while, or if she doesn't have room, I, I was thinking I might call the transition house to see if we could go there. 
I'm worried about moving out, though, because James has all our money. I don't have any of my own. I'm glad you're thinking about how to stay safe, Marnie. I can show you a safety planning brochure that tells you other things to think about. Also, don't let money stop you from leaving. Just get out of here. You won't need money at Auntie's or the Transition House. And once you get there, someone will help you apply to get some. It's not just the money, Claire. I'm scared I'm going to lose the kids. Or he'll hurt them. I, I can't leave. But Marnie... And so it was a stormy winter. It seemed like there would never be an end to it. Until one day my daughter, who looks just like me, came home looking even more like me. Black eye and all. Her boyfriend hit her. And that's when I knew I had to get out. I want a better life for me and my kids. I need to report a crime. I told the police that James is a danger to me and the kids. We left. I gathered all of our ID and important papers and some clothes, and we went to Auntie's house, where I knew we would be safe. You're lucky you can stay with Auntie, Marnie. When I left my ex, we lived in the city, so I didn't have anyone to stay with. I lived in a safe house for a while. It was the safest place I could find. What happened with your kids then? I went to family court with my legal aid lawyer, and the judge decided that the kids could stay with me. It's called an interim parenting order. I'll help you apply for legal aid to get that done. Thanks for taking us in, Auntie. I'm just glad you're all safe. Come in, we'll talk. This is a dangerous time for you and the kids, Marnie. It's true, Marn. You have to plan for your future safety, too. They say that the most dangerous times for a woman and her children is right after leaving her relationship and again when starting the legal process. Well, I'm ready. What happens next? Now that he's been arrested, the Crown Council will decide whether to charge James with assault. If they do, James will probably have a bail hearing today. If the judge lets him out of jail on bail, Crown Council or a victim services worker will contact you to let you know what the terms of his bail are. His terms may include that he isn't allowed to contact you, go to your home, work, or kids' school. If there is a trial, you might have to testify against him. You will also have the chance to tell the judge how James has hurt you and your family. Make sure you give the judge all the information you can, even if you think it's not important. In the meantime, you need money. You should call the band office and apply for social assistance. And make sure you use my address so that the money comes here where it's safe. Got it. But what about the house? I want to be able to go back. I want to raise my kids there. There's a lot of options for you to be safe in your home, Marnie. Like what? Well, in criminal court, Crown Counsel could ask that James be prohibited from contacting you. It's called a no-contact order. For sure. And you should still go to family court for a protection order as well. I'll help you call legal aid. You may be able to get a free lawyer to go to family court with you. And help get some things like an interim parenting order so the kids can stay with you for now. Since you live on reserve, the court can also order James to leave the home for a long time. It's called an exclusive occupation order. And you can get it through the family court. We'll find out more from a family lawyer. It's all so much to take in. I just want to go home. You're doing the right thing. Try not to worry. You can stay here with me until we know it's safe for you guys to go home. Yeah, and remember, you have every right to stay in your home. Did you know that even if you weren't a band member, the court might decide it's in the kids' best interests for you to stay there with them? I had a legal aid lawyer in family court to help me get a protection order. James had to go to criminal court because he was charged with assaulting me. Going to court for the criminal trial was scary, but not as scary as all the storms we had to bear. I contacted victim services. I talked to the worker who explained my choices and what could happen. James will go to court first because he has to plead guilty or not guilty. If he pleads not guilty, 
There will be a trial, and the judge will decide if there's enough evidence to find him guilty. If there's a trial, do I have to be there? You will probably have to go to the trial and explain what happened. James pleaded not guilty. I sat down with Crown Counsel to talk about court. I need to know what might happen to James after this is over. I understand why you were worried. If James is found guilty, he might have to go to jail. Or he might not go to jail, but the judge might order him to attend counseling. There could also be a no-contact order. These are just some examples of what could happen. We went to trial. I had to speak in court about what happened to me. The Crown Counsel asked me questions. I was cross-examined by James's defense lawyer. I was nervous. But I knew I was telling the truth, so I felt strong. Plus, my cousin was there to support me. The court finds the defendant guilty of assault. What a relief. There was a lot of information to get through in the legal process, but there was always someone to explain things at every step. So, James is being sentenced today. Yeah, I'm not going to court. That's good. The Crown Council will call and let you know what happens. You have other things to worry about. I hope that my story helps people. Look, Mom! My kids and I are in counseling. James is going to a healing circle. He's lucky that there's one in our community. Hopefully, he gets the help he needs. I'm just glad that we are back at our own home. And most of all, that we're safe from the storms. I left an abusive relationship. It was hard. But I see only clear skies now. For me and my kids, the cycle has ended.